911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911. Pop it up, baby, come on. It's every mother's nightmare. I saw a baby that's choking. When efforts to save her child. We still had a total blockage of air. Becomes a race against time on Rescue 911. Twenty-eight-year-old Donna Beauchelle was well-trained in life-saving techniques, and twice before she had used those skills to save the lives of two local children. But on November 14, 1989, one of Donna's own kids would desperately need her help. Donna had stayed in Norfolk, Virginia with her four kids, while her husband was overseas with the Navy. On that morning, she was home with her daughter, Sarah, and her youngest, 23-month-old Ryan. I was sitting at the, the dining room table looking through newspapers because I like to send my husband articles about what's happening with the Navy around here or just the local news. That's good boy, Ryan. The men overseas like to hear what's happening in their hometown. Yeah! Around 9 a.m., Robert Gower and Donald Coleman arrived to finish installing an air conditioning unit in back of Donna's house. This was our last day on the job, and uh, we'd only had about a half a day's left of work to do. Being a mother of four children, I seem to be able to tune in to where my, what my kids are doing, even when they're out of my sight or if I'm not looking directly at them. The first thing I noticed was the baby reach up on top of the TV. And I thought he was just reaching up to pick up a magazine. I knew right away that he was choking on something, but I had no idea what. Mommy! Ryan, cough it up! Come on, Ryan! Cough it up, baby! Come on! Ryan! Ryan! Come on, Ryan! Ryan! Then there was no change at all. He still had a total blockage of air. I didn't see anybody, but I did see the contractor's truck. And then I thought, the Heimlich maneuver. Ryan! Come on, Ryan! Come on, baby! Cough it up, baby! Come on! Come on, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. I was losing the battle against time. Come on, Ryan. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, baby. My baby is slipping away. Come on, Ryan. I definitely needed help. It had been two minutes since Ryan stopped breathing. I really didn't know what we could do. I thought to myself, just go up there and try to do something. Neither of the men had training in first aid. Now and watch. Okay. Yeah, he's not breathing either, Donald. Not the police, I'm trying to carry him. I, I saw a baby that's choking. Come on, boy. See if you feel something in his throat. I don't feel, feel anything. Watch out. Is he not breathing at all? He's breathing a little bit. Then he's going to be okay. Just calm down, ma'am. As long as he's breathing, he'll be okay. Just stay on the line with me for just a second. Do you know what I absolutely, I just couldn't look. I don't think I wanted to know if the baby had passed out yet. I just couldn't handle it at that moment. Come on, son. He was struggling for air. I mean, I could tell he wasn't breathing. He was just, like, gasping. And uh, I said, you know, I thought to myself, man, we, we got problems here, you know. Come on. Uh, then I thought, we let's try this highway maneuver. Um, Let me try this. I didn't know how to do it, but I just, I've seen pictures of it done and heard people talk about how it's done, so I just tried that. Come on, come on, spit it up. Come on, son. Uh, 
Picked him up and just wanted to hold him really tight. And I was so thankful that he was okay. Ryan has suffered no ill effects from the incident. Three months later, he seems to have forgotten all about it. The whole event was extremely terrifying. You feel this overwhelming responsibility to this child who is looking to you to make it all better. And here comes a situation where you can't make it all better. It was very overwhelming. Sarah and Ryan are, are very close, so she's always looking out for him. Glad Ryan is cake because I love him. I mean, it never crossed my mind not to help. I mean, how can somebody ask you to help her in a situation like that? How can you, you know, you can't say no. I didn't have time to think about it, really. I just ran up and tried to do what I could do, you know, or whatever I could do to help. I thought it was very ironic that they have no training, and I've been trained for 10 years. They didn't think twice about being and getting involved. They are very special men. They saved his life. If you are interested in learning life-saving techniques, contact the American Heart Association or the American Red Cross.